Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Well Done Tanks. I'm Trent Weldon, and tonight it is finally time. We are going to set up a 10 gallon tank specifically to breed the beautiful pair of German Blue Rams that the waterfront supplied me with. So the fish room is in full swing, and I'm trying to find the best lighting angle on everything, so I apologize as if it's not just the best camera work, but we have just a simple 10 gallon tank and I'm trying to keep all the shadows off of me. Well, you know, keep myself out of the reflection, I guess you should say. But I'm gonna be following the tutorial that uh, Master Breeder Dean did with Corey from Aquarian Co-op on setting up a 10 gallon tank to breed German Blue Rams. So I will be leaving that card up in the corner Dean's knowledge of breeding German Blue Rams, where he's literally bred thousands of these fish, I think he's my best source in setting up a very specific tank to breed German Blue Rams with. So to get started off with, this is a simple, this 10 gallon tank, I bought it at the Petco in the dollar per gallon sale, and I, I, I have painted all the sides black. Um, I thought about just doing the back, now that I've kind of done it, I almost wish that I had kept the two sides unpainted just to allow me a side view of the tank. But I feel that this way the rams will feel more comfortable. They're not gonna feel as open. So they, like, like Dean says, the fish has something to back up to and hopefully kind of get out of a situation if they feel like that. In the very back, I have a 100 watt heater. This is the Fluval LCD heater. Uh, I like these heaters. I've had really good success with these heaters, and I have it set to 84 degrees right now. <clears throat> and one of the main reasons why I like these heaters is how simple it is to adjust um, the temperature on these. So I've, I've done a review on these heaters as well. I'll be leaving a link up in the corner to that. And everything we're using tonight, like most of this product did come from Aquarium Co-op. So next to that, we have just a simple uh, sponge filter in the tank. This is one of the Aquarian Co-op's coarse sponge filters, and it is the, I want to say it's the small sponge filter, so the one that's actually rated for 10 gallons. And since we're only keeping a pair of fish in here, that's about all we're going to really need for this tank. Uh, lighting on the tank is just going to be a simple, it's a simple LED T5 shop light that I have mounted to the ceiling that's, you know, lighting this, the shelf on this racking system. <clears throat> but now let's really get into how Dean suggests that we set this tank up, right? So one of the things Dean talked about, let me make sure I can, this kind of comes up properly, was using dark, smooth stones. So I got two of those here. Um, kind of, I may add one or two more down the, few, down the road, but this is one thing that Dean definitely said to use, was this, this is like this a river stone. I think I found these at Home Depot in a big bag, really cheap. Uh, he said a, a smooth, dark stone is what he had the best success with. And these were you know, most of the two smoothest rocks I was able to pull you know, out of that bag. So we're going to start with these. So one, I am going to place more towards the back of the tank. I don't know. And then another, we're going to place up here in the front providing as smooth of a surface as I possibly can for these fish here. All right. <clears throat> then another main thing Dean talks about that you're going to need in your tank is a couple places for your fish to hide. So I picked up some of the uh, terracotta pots, the small, picked up some of the smallest terracotta pots that I could find at, uh, at Home Depot. Now I know there's smaller versions out there, but this is what I was able to find at Home Depot on the smallest standpoint. And I did spend a little bit of time sanding down that bottom edge there. Uh, that was another tip, a major tip that Dean gave. Like if you want some like super secret, been doing this for 50 years, I don't know how long he's been doing it, but like Dean's a genius. And he talked about sanding off the bottom so that the pot doesn't roll around in the tank, right? So it's a very stable platform for that pond to rest. This will allow the fish to swim into this, kind of get away from each other, add a little bit of light, of, add a lot of sight block. But then he also talked about using a second terracotta pot 
up here in the front, maybe we'll put it over here actually so I can kind of see both. Now, I, uh, he didn't specifically say you had to break it kind of a thing. I kind of saw it on his channel. And honestly, I took just a normal terracotta pot. I took a hammer to it. I legit took a hammer to it, uh, broke it in half to allow me to stand this up and kind of, you know, encompass the rock on this. That way, if needs be, like the female can come in here, start laying the eggs, the male can come in here, guard the eggs, kind of however they want to do that. And he also suggested on putting that second rock, you know, in, in that second terracotta pot, in that second hide, just to allow a little bit of sight block and just, you know, for the fish to go into and hide. So really that's all we need is for this, but there's one more very key ingredient, uh, ingredient when we're on a cooking show. There's one more thing that Dean suggested we have in this tank, and that was something to add an additional sight block. So he talked about using maybe a small piece of driftwood you can put in there, but another thing that he really likes to use is uh, java moss in his tanks. And Peter with Guppy Guru was kind enough to supply me with a large portion of java moss tonight. I actually don't think he knew that I was going to be using it for this video, but I definitely am going to be using a lot of java moss in my fish room this go around for some breeding purposes. So this is a honestly a really decent size that we're going to be putting in here. Um, bigger than a golf ball you know maybe like kind of the size of a tennis ball when it's all poofed out so we're actually just gonna let this float here in the tank um, I'm not gonna glue it to anything I'm not gonna attach it to anything we're just gonna let it do its thing and what that's gonna provide is a, a line of sight block for the fish but also when we successfully breed these fish and let's say we are able to hatch you know and I have raise the fry in the tank, right? We let the parents, we give them a couple chances to prove they can do it. Let's say they start doing it. This java moss is going to be full of small infusoria. It's going to be full of small copepods. Just things for those baby fish to go swim into and actually eat. So it's going to provide just a great source uh, for that initial maybe feeding of the, of the fry. But it's also, in essence, it really will help suck up any kind of nutrients you know, nitrates and all that kind of thing for the tank. But there it is, guys. Like, that is the simple setup for breeding German Blue Rams as instructed by Master Breeder Dean. And I say, this is a guy that's bred thousands of these German Blue Rams. So I'm excited. I'm very excited to have these. I'm excited to get this going. So now let's go grab the pair of fish we're going to put in here. Um, I don't have a tank yet to, like, select out a male and a female. Uh, the waterfront, my new local fish store, definitely sponsored me and gave me these beautiful pair of German Blue Rams. So I'm going to go ahead and go get those. We'll take some footage of them and get them in the tank. So this is the pair of German Blue Rams that Lewis with the, the waterfront gave to me. Um, I, <clears throat> from the knowledge I have, a gentleman passed away and his wife was taking care of the tanks and had these beautiful pair of German Blue Rams that were spawning actively in the tank and had even, from the knowledge that we he'd given to me, is that the gentleman had been working on this specific strain of fish for quite some time. So to get given a pair of German Blue Rams that is some of the best German Blue Rams that I've seen locally and know that they're a proven pair, know that they've spawned, is beyond me. I, I cannot thank Lewis enough for this opportunity to have to bring this beautiful pair of German Blue Rams into my fish room. So the deal with Lewis, you know, he gave them to me, no charge. This I'm going to say this one is 100% sponsored, you know, by, you know, the waterfront. A guppy guru pitched in with the, uh, <clears throat> the Java Moss. You know, and then thanks to Aquarian Co-op for providing me with such ample, you know, good products, right? To have a reliable heater, to have a good sponge filter in this tank, but then to also, you know, be willing to bring Dean's knowledge. And then thank you to Dean for even being willing to share that knowledge to allow me to now have a chance at spawning and raising German Blue Rams. So very excited to have these. Let's now get them in the tank, get them settled in. And I, I hope we have eggs soon. Man, I hope we have eggs soon. 
is that this, it would just be just awesome to start the fish room out right. And we especially are with this beautiful, beautiful pair of German Blue Rams. So we're going to get them in the tank and wrap this video up. So once again, I definitely want to say thank you to Aquarium Co-op and Dean, with you know, Master Breeder Dean, you know, Dean with Dean's Fish Room for providing such valuable information on how to breed German Blue Rams. So of course, the moment we got the pair in the tank, uh, they, they kind of took off to the back of the tank. I can see the female here on the side. I believe the male's in the back. That's understandable, right? We're going to give them a couple days to settle in and we will definitely be doing some updates on this breeding tank. It's just like, it's not the first fish in the fish room, but this is like the first official tank set up to breed, specifically breed some fish. And I, I am so excited to enter this part of the hobby with it. So again, thank you everybody who participated and has helped me get this going. Um, I'm just so blessed and very grateful for it. So if you guys wanna see more of this, Make sure to check out Aquarium Co-op. If you haven't already, I'd be shocked if you haven't. But if you want to see my progression with my pair of rams, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and leave me a comment. Have you had experience breeding German Blue Rams? What's your favorite fish you want, you are breeding? And what's a fish you want to breed? So always enjoy hearing about what other people got going on. And if you want to see more of the fish room build, we got more coming. So thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys in the next one.